being a Francophile and, uh, and, and, and someone who lived in Paris the whole time, it's very close to my heart. And so I am really, really delighted to be here today with all of you uh, to, to open officially this presentation of the Cantor's collection. We had a first showing of their collection in 1971, mm -hmm. yes, so a small fraction. So this is just, again, as I said, many conversations have happened since, but uh, it is beautiful to have the, the Cantors associated with the Nelson Atkins in this new beautiful lobby. At the height of his career, Auguste Rodin was considered to be the greatest sculptor since Michelangelo, and he's the only sculptor of the modern era to hold this honor. Rodin's great legacy, to which we pay tribute here today with this exhibition, stems from his groundbreaking originality. Rodin turned his back on just about every academic convention and tradition that existed in the 19th century. Rather than idealize his subjects with perfected bodies and polished surfaces, he developed a bold impressionistic modeling technique that emphasizes the movement and vitality of the subjects, both in body and in mind. Up at the plaza level and down the ramp, there's a small selection of expressive hands, which is the second theme that we explore here in the exhibition, and they were really Bernie Cantor's true passion is what started him collecting Rodin in the 1940s. And lastly, the third theme of the exhibition is dedicated to the Gates of Hell, and it's installed on the plaza level and down the ramp. The Gates of Hell was Rodin's most important commission, and the project was to create a decorative portal for a proposed museum of decorative arts. Inspired by Dante's epic poem, The Divine Comedy, the portal features nearly 200 figures illustrating Dante's voyage through the inferno and the condemned souls that he would encounter there. The proposed Museum of Decorative Arts never came to fruition, but Rodin continued to work on the door, creating new figures, and exhibiting the figures as standalone sculptures, much as you'll see them here. Removed from the context of the portal, the figures lose their specific narrative, becoming instead universal symbols of the human condition, our capacity to feel joy, to feel sorrow, to love, and to lose. Some of Rodin's most iconic works stem from this great project, such as The Kiss and, of course, The Thinker.